Hello again, Bill Weir, ABC News Nightline. You see that guy down there? His credit card company knows that he will probably be divorced by this time next year because he's buying a lot more teeth whitening and gym time and hotel rooms within his own city. They know that guy in that cab is probably using a stolen credit card because he just bought champagne, razor blades, and diapers. The first two are easy to resell and the my baby needed diapers, I forgot my ID excuse is notoriously effective on soft-hearted cashiers. And that woman's smartphone, it knows that she is sliding into depression two days before she does, because her time at home has gone up, her time on Facebook and Twitter has gone down. Yes, there are eight million stories in the naked city, six billion around the world. And when you take the digital bits of all of those different lives, all the Facebook posts and airport check-ins and Google searches, you get what some consider the most exciting trend in technology today, big data. The internet was just the beginning. Now our countless gadgets are filling that global nervous system as we capture and share ourselves at an astounding rate. We've had cameras for a couple of centuries. 10% of all photographs ever taken were taken last year. It's astounding. And the corollary to that is that 90% of all the information created by the human race was created in the last two years. I mean, it's a straight vertical line. Rick Smolin is best known for creating the Day in the Life series of coffee table photo essays. And when he started hearing anecdotes about this exploding galaxy of digital records, he knew he had to find a way to shoot the human face of big data. How all this information is shaping us and how fortunes will be made making sense of it all. Yes, data scientist is now the hottest new job in tech. To exploit markets or manage risk, companies are desperate for people who can write algorithms, the kind that can spot a crumbling marriage in credit card spending patterns or mood swings in smartphone usage. There's a guy up in Boston, uh, he has a company called Ginger.io, and companies, it, it turns out that you have a daily radius, a, a daily pattern of activity. Bill gets up in the morning about this time every day, he, he comes to ABC, he goes to lunch, he goes back, and so within a week your phone builds up a pattern of your regular activity. And two days before you get depressed, the amount of time you spend at home goes up, your tweets and emails go down, your radius starts shrinking. You might say, well, who cares and who would be doing this and isn't this people spying on me? It turns out that um, people with diabetes who get depressed have a very high correlation with that and not taking their medicine. And if you have diabetes and you don't take your medicine, there's severe consequences. So you, as somebody who has diabetes, you set up an alert and you say, tell my wife, tell my doctor, tell my kids. If it looks like I'm going into one of those depressive episodes, touch base with me, just check in. Wow. So it's actually kind of cool. I right. mean, it's, you know, it's not invasive, it's actually, it's beneficial. By digging through miles of heartbeat records, doctors can now spot infections before they take hold in babies and even head off repeat heart attacks in adults. By mining the data in wedding planning websites, baby product companies know that a newlywed in Los Angeles will probably start her family three years later than the one in Minnesota. But big data also raises legitimate fear of a private sector big brother, watching your every move with only their profits in mind. Someone was telling me recently that um, uh, companies, before they give you a mortgage, um, recently were trying to get access to people's Facebook data. Okay, why? What would Facebook tell you if you're gonna get a mortgage? And someone said, well, you know what? If you listen to rap music, you might be more of a credit risk. There's a gentleman in the book who has a pacemaker, and the pacemaker transmits his data throughout the day wirelessly to his doctor. And he started measuring his exercise, his diet, his consumption of alcohol, other behaviors. And so he called the company and said, could I get a copy of all the data, you, your, my heart data that you've been collecting for the last six months? And they said, sorry, sir, that, that's our data. That's proprietary. And they, they won't give it to him. Why is it all of our browser search histories and all of our credit card transactions, everyone's trading in all this information that we're generating, and yet we have no say over who's getting it, what they're doing with it, who's profiting from it. And I think each of us as individuals have to start saying, I want control over who knows what about me. We need to be talking about this right now.